Hello and welcome to Double Portion Ministries. Prophetess Paulette Denise here with our word for the month of April, April 2020. Today is actually April the 14th, 2020. And we are here with our word for the month. Um, I did a word last week, but it wasn't the monthly word. This is the monthly word. And it is understanding your salvation. How do I know I'm saved? And you know what? Whether we've been in the things of God for a long time or are new. It never hurts to brush back over and understand the foundation of salvation that we can understand by no other name are we saved, that we can understand that it is through our confession and what we really believe is how we're saved. It's not how good you were. It's not did you go to church and did you didn't go to church. And it's not how sinful you were. That's not salvation. Um, salvation is found through the person, Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to give us some scriptures. We'll go through for about 15, 20 minutes and we'll be done. God, we thank you and praise you for the privilege of prayer, the honor of prayer, even my shirt. This, this wasn't on purpose. I promise you. I wasn't planning on doing this recording today before I start praying. Um, Y'all know me and my hair. This is, Okay, so I'm washed down. I'm in French braids. That's how I'm doing it this week. I'm going to color it next week. It'll be different. But anyway, I wasn't ready. We went walking this morning and it's kind of cool this morning. So I put on my sweatshirt, but it says prayer, the world's greatest wireless connection. And I'm like, you know what? This is perfect. This is perfect to do this recording today for a double portion. It's all about teaching the people how to pray and giving us a firm foundation in the word of God through prayer. So. Now, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being our teacher, giving us revelation, illumination, knowledge, insight, and wisdom. Thank you for uh, saving us from the sin-sick world. We're in the world, but not of the world. And we thank you that as we go forward into this time, that you will give us revelation, illumination, knowledge, insight, wisdom, as to understanding our salvation, that it is a process, that you get the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. And I will say this, I... Don't have real notes. I have three scriptures. And as I just prayed, I'm hearing so much more that I can pray. So I'm going to look at the clock. I'm going to go to the 15 minute mark. And then we don't go just stop and pray. Our first scripture is in Romans 10. A lot of people go there for salvation. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 of the Amplified. It says, because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips, as some versions say with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe. And I love the Amplified. It says you're going to adhere to, trust in, rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. We just celebrated Resurrection Sunday and I call it Resurrection Sunday, not Easter. Because it's not about Estar. It's not about a pagan religion. It has nothing to do with the Easter bunny or Easter egg and chocolate. It is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he's raised from the dead. And by believing that he is the son of God, that he came, he was crucified, he was buried and he rose again. He is risen by believing that in your heart, that act that's access into salvation. And now that you're saved, that's the justification that's justifying you where mankind is separated from God. And by believing in Jesus Christ, that puts you back in right standing with God. That's justification. But now what we must live in is a sanctification process. And that's why some people try and grab the process without getting the justification piece down. And, and it's just all messed up because you think that you got to, if I do, if I act, if I do, if I act, I was speaking with someone two weeks ago and he said, I said, I asked the question in a questionnaire. I said, if you were to die today, where would you go? Do you know where you would spend eternity? And the response was, I hope I've done enough good to make it into heaven. Well, doing enough good ain't going to get you in heaven. You do all the good you want. But if you never accepted Jesus as your savior, you're not going to make it to heaven. Access into heaven is the blood of Jesus. Access into heaven is the savior, Jesus Christ. It is not how good or bad you were. Where does the good or bad part come in, Paulette? I'm glad you asked. I'll show you in a minute. Let me finish reading. We just read verse 9 of Romans 10. It says, for with the heart a person believes, adheres to, trust in, and relies on Christ, and so is justified. See, that's the justification piece. Just as if I never sinned. Um, it says justified is declared righteous, acceptable to God. And with the mouth, he confesses or declares openly and speaks out freely his faith and confirms his salvation. So that's Romans 10, 9 and 10. That's the first place you need to go. And understand this. We do live in a very rebellious world. There's a lot of rebellion going on in the world. If you go back, now this salvation is found in Romans chapter 10. Well, if you go back to Romans chapter 1, 
back in the days when Paul wrote this letter to the, the church at Rome, there was all kind of rebellion going on. And he said, because they were rebellious and they wouldn't accept the truth, when I revealed the truth to them, I turned them over to a reprobate mind. Say a lot right there. Um, and so, yes, there's a rebellion going on in the beginning of Romans. But as we get on, he said, in spite of the rebellion, the way that people can get out of the rebellious mindset is to get saved. And now you have the mind, you have access to the mind of Christ. But if you don't go through the sanctification process, acknowledge Holy Spirit as your helper in this thing called salvation, you'll have a problem getting there. Good Lord. Philippians chapter two. Let me show you this other piece about why people think you can work to get into heaven. It's not telling you to work to get into heaven. That's not what it's saying here in Philippians chapter two. I'm trying to get to verse 12, but let me tell you something. At the beginning of Philippians chapter 2, it says, uh, join to, it talks about being joined together in perfect unity. And then it talks about the example of Jesus Christ. And then it talks about how believers shine like lights in the world. So number one, you got to be unified with the believers. And your example of this unity is Jesus. Jesus hung out with the sinners and the tax collectors. He didn't only hang out with the religious people. As a matter of fact, he called the religious people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, a brood of vipers. So don't get caught up being religious. You need to be a disciple that's sitting at the feet of Jesus and re be receiving what he's teaching us how to be fishers of men. Whole nother message. At verse 12 of Philippians chapter 2, he's, he's saying, well, even if you go back up, we quote this one all the time. Let's go verse 10. That in or at the name of Jesus, let's go back up to verse 9, you can't start at a comma. Verse 9 says, therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that in and at the name of Jesus, every knee should or must bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. That's another message. And every tongue frankly and openly confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So see, you're going to have to confess it. One, I'd rather confess it now and receive salvation than have to confess it in the body. Okay, in the, just keep going. Verse 12, let me show you. This, was, this is where I was trying to get to, verse 12. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent. So, so this is Paul speaking to the church at Philippi, and he's saying, yeah, I, I understand you, you tried to do what I was teaching you and showing you about Jesus Christ, your salvation in him, and it's in no other name, no other work, not no teacher, not no church, not no denomination, it's in Jesus only. He said, then he said to them, he said, now, not only I want you to do this, I want you to work out. The Amplified says, cultivate, carry out to the goal and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe trembling, self-distrust with a serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever may offend God and discredit the name of Christ. That's the work. You're working out your own salvation. You're getting in an understanding of Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. That wasn't in my notes, but let's go ahead and, and read this. You're, you're working out your own salvation. You will have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ when you, when you die. And you have to give an account for what you did or didn't do while you were here in the earth realm. You'll have to give an account for the truths that you've been exposed to. In Luke chapter 12, it says to the servant that knew to do good and didn't, he'll be beaten with many blows. And to the one who didn't know to do good and he didn't, he'll be beaten with few. The point is, in order to not get beat at all in, the, in, in this judgment seat of Christ, is to get into the word and allow him to transform you. So I was trying to get to Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. I want you to see this piece that we have to learn of him. We have to learn of this Jesus that our salvation is in. We learn of this Jesus, Matthew 8, not 8, Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. It says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. Do you know, rest in the salvation of Jesus Christ. Learn of him, not all these denominations and rules and regulations and do it like this. Now, look, I used to, when I first started this ministry, this is, this is when you know you got a good teacher. They can repent of doing something wrong. I used to tell people, you need to go to church. You need to go to church. You need to go to church. And then after about three years of that, Lord says, stop telling people to go to church. 
Tell people to get in the word and get in relationship with me and then they'll understand why they need a church. They'll understand the role of the church and you'll know when you're at the right church because you're in the word for yourself and the church will be giving confirmation to the things that you're getting in the word for yourself. That's when you know you're at the right church. And so even now while we're in the shutdown, ain't nobody going to church, we are the church. And so who's feeding you? Who's helping you grow? Who's encouraging you and showing you how to get in it for yourself? So now, I used to say go to church. God said stop that. So I must say, he knew way back then the day would come when we couldn't go to church. We got to be the church. And so, and, and as one thing that we can do to get stronger is to learn of him. To learn to rest in the finished work of Calvary. That's a whole Jesus. But he says, come to me and I'll cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Do you feel soul sick? Are you having a heaviness of heart or a depression that's trying to hit you in the midst of this shutdown? This is a good time to come to him. If you have books, if you have you version on your phone, there's devotionals in your phone about meeting Jesus or knowing Jesus, growing and knowing Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it in this link. I have a devotional challenge that I give people about growing and knowing God through Psalm 119. You don't even need anything extra. You have Psalm 119, you got it right there. I'm going to put it in this link and that could be a 22 day devotional for you that you could go ahead and do. Well, it's 22 days in Psalm 119. The way Holy Spirit had me write it is that's a 40 day devotional where I do some instructions before the 22 days. Then we do the 22 days and we come out afterwards because 40 is the number of testing. But anyway, because the role and the goal is to learn of Jesus so that I can rest in him, so that he can cause me to have ease and relief and refreshing in my soul. Verse 29 of Matthew 11 says, take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome. It's useful. It's good. It's not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, but it's comfortable. It's gracious, and it's pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. And so I want us to know that salvation, your salvation comes through Jesus. And let me share you this story right here. Some, I don't get caught into theological debates, but this question comes up a lot. Can I mess up and lose my salvation? Well, my maiden name is Adams. My biological father is Rufus Adams. Now, we didn't have relationship in my younger years. It wasn't until I got older that we had relationship. But guess what? He was still my father and Adams was still my last name. It didn't change because either he moved or I moved. And I usually like to use one of my daughters where I'll say, her dad is her dad. Her behavior won't stop him from being her dad. It'll stop fellowship, but it won't stop him. And so then you may say, but I done messed up and I did. Luke 15 is your story then. The prodigal, father, the prodigal son, his father never stopped being his father because he was doing what he wanted to do out there in the world. When do, I'm going to do, it's my thing, do what I want to do. His father never stopped being his father. But his father didn't go looking for him out there either. His father continued doing what he had to do while he was there. Now, he had an expectation for him to come back. Your heavenly father has an expect. He's not moving. He is your heavenly father. He's like, you, you heard about me. You received my son. You got salvation. But the cares of this world, life doesn't happen to you. Got you so weighed down. And now you don't, you talking about you don't want to do it no more. I can't run after you because you have a free will. That's where the free will piece comes in. But he's there waiting for you. All you have to do is rededicate your life to the Lord. Rededicate your life to the Lord and then get in some, get in the word of God for yourself. Know this, there's no other name by which men shall be saved. That's found in Acts chapter 4. Um, Acts chapter 4 verse 11 starts talking about this. Jesus is the stone which was despised and rejected by you, the builders, but which has become the head of the corner or the cornerstone. And there is salvation in and through no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by and in which we must be saved. So we must be saved through the name of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through accepting him as our savior. I know I've said a lot. I've said a lot. And understand this, when you get a better understanding of who he is, let me just drop this one on this line. In 1 John chapter 4, I decided to use my computer this time around because I knew I, I wasn't sure exactly where Holy Spirit was going to take me. But in 1 John chapter 4, 
it's talking about beware of false teachers that are coming among us. But then it's this book is all about the love of God too. God is love. And so down at um, verse 17, I would say so much more. Oh, when I tell you, read the whole first John chapter four or really pick up at verse 15 through the end. But first John chapter four, at verse 17, it says in this union and communion with him, capital H, in this union and communion with Jesus Christ, love is brought to completion and it attains perfection with us that we may have confidence on the day of judgment. See, there is a judgment day coming. But your confidence is because you know who you you've accepted Jesus as your savior and you're growing and knowing who he is and who you are in him through the help of the Holy Spirit. That's I have series on all of this. If you would like more information, if you have something that you need to know more about, just send me an email at pauletx7 at gmail.com and I'll send you some of the other links to some of the other teaching. I have a catalog of all of my my uh, words. But anyway, here in first John four. Verse 17, it says, this union and communion with him, love is brought to completion and attains perfection in us that we may have confidence for the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him because as he is, so are we in this world. So this is saying, as Jesus is, we are to be in this world. And so we have a transformation that we must go through. We must renew our minds according to the word of God. That's Romans chapter 12, verse 2. that says that we renew our minds according to the word of God. Um, and, and as we do that, he will uh, make himself real to us. And we, we, we will be able to walk in the fact that as he is, so are we in this world. That's, 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 that's like a, a, a tough pill. I'm not Jesus. Uh, you're a Jesus representative. And so what you need to do is Romans 12. Verse 2 is where we're going to, but I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. This is my last scripture. We're done. I got so much more I could say, but I'm going to stop right there. Um, so uh, in the Passion Translation, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 are titled, The Transformation Power of the Gospel. So you accept salvation through knowing the gospel, through hearing the gospel of access into the kingdom. Now you got access in the kingdom. Now you must grow in being kingdom ready. Got a whole book about it. Anyway, beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourselves to God. Mm -hmm. Be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. And understand this, holiness is not a list of do's and don'ts. Holiness is as he is, so are we. Holiness is be holy for I am holy. It's not do holy, act holy. It's just a be thing. And you be it as you learn of him, then you understand the holiness. Jesus. But so it says live in holiness, experience and all that delights his heart. But this becomes your genuine expression of worship. And so then verse two says, stop, uh, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. Basically, that's saying don't be conformed to this world, to this age. Don't be fashioned after and shaped into its external superficial customs. So I'm meshing together the Amplified and the Passion Translation. The Passion goes on to say, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. You're going to be uh, inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit. Inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. The Amplified side said that, uh, but be transformed, be changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals, its new attitude. It's a whole change that you got to do. Change the way you think according to the word of God. It says this will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. That's, that's the end of, of verse 2. Uh, the Passion Translation, the Amplified says, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. I pray that if you are questioning your salvation, that you've written down these scriptures that we've gone over. We've reviewed Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. We've reviewed Philippians chapter 2, I think verse 9 through 12. We looked at 1 John chapter 4, 
verse 17 and 18. And now we've looked at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I pray that if, if, if there was a question of where you're going, that that question is out of the way. But now you have a responsibility and you have the Holy Spirit as your teacher. Good Lord. One last scripture I want us to, I want to release in our hearing because I don't want you to think I got I can't get to the church. Number one, you are the church. Number one. But then number two, you have Holy Spirit. You hear me talking about him as a person. He is. He is your teacher. He leads you and guides you, instructs you, directs you, corrects you. Um, and let me get to it right here. First John chapter two. We're going to first John chapter two, verse 20 says, but you have been anointed. You hold a sacred appointment from you have been given an unction from the Holy One and you know the truth. You, you, it says, and you all know the truth or you all know, you know, all things. See, Holy Spirit is going to reveal these things to you. One of his names is he's the revealer of truth. If you drop down to verse seven, it says it. Well, it's talking about all this stuff that's going on in the world. People getting mad, worldly views. And then at verse 27, it says, but as for you, the anointing, the sacred appointment, the unction which you receive from him abides permanently in you. So then you have no need that anyone should instruct you. But just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true and is no falsehood, so you must abide in, live in, never depart from him, being rooted in him, knit to him, just as his anointing has taught you to do. Now, I'm not saying you don't need a teacher. The scripture is not even telling you you don't need a teacher, but what it's saying is in this, in context, they were who, I, you know, they were tripping over who's in charge and who's teaching it. And he was like, look, you don't worry about those things because you have Holy Spirit. He teaches you and he will let you know when you're connected to a teacher that's from God or a teacher that's a false teacher, like we saw over there in first John chapter four. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for being with us. I thank you for our salvation, being sure and firm in you. This is not a license to sin. This is actually a license to be strengthened and to walk forward and fulfill everything that you have for us to fulfill. I pray for each and every person watching this video that their salvation is sure in you. And so let's pray this prayer. Father God, I come to you now and I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as the savior of the world. Even if I've already accepted him, I rededicate my life afresh and anew on this day called today. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to begin or continue to lead me, guide me, instruct me, direct me, correct me. Be my guide. Be with me. Show me what it means to be a believer, not a, Christ, a Christian, but a believer, a disciple of Christ. Disciple me, Holy Spirit, and attach me with people that will help me disciple and grow in him, grow in you, grow in learning and understanding who you are and who I am in you. Because as he is, so am I in this world. He's not raggedy. He doesn't have a potty mouth. Those, those are X's on my back, and I thank you for covering them with the blood of Jesus. He doesn't club. He doesn't talk crazy. He doesn't hoe around. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers anything that's in my past, anything that I was and did. I am now a new creation in Christ Jesus. And God, I thank you for empowering me to step outside of any religious mindsets that try to make me think I had to work for salvation and allow me to receive salvation. But what I must do is work out my own sanctification process. And so God, I thank you for empowering your people be with us until we meet again next month. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and bless God in the sanctuary.